He was better than his teachers and had the potential to become a criminal mastermind. But the burning flame of revenge consumed all his potential and led him to his death. Today, I will be talking about the original Shredder from Mirage Comics. The Shredder was created for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one in 1984 by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. The idea for the character came up when they were creating the issue and Kevin saw a rectangular cheese grater with a handle at the bottom. He slid his arm into it and then they thought, could you imagine a character with weapons on his arms? He would be lethal. And they came up with the name of the Shredder. Cheese grates not included. His origin story started with his brother, Oroku Nagi, who was a shadow warrior and assassin for the Foot Clan. He and Hamato Yoshi competed fiercely in all things, especially for the love of a young woman named Tang Shin. Both tried to win her heart, but from the start, she loved only Hamato Yoshi. Nagi was insanely jealous, so one fateful night, he went to Tang Shin's home and demanded that she love him. Shin refused, and in a jealous rage, Nagi began to beat her up. At that moment, Yoshi, who was coming to visit her, entered the room and saw Nagi poised to strike. Nagi was determined that if he couldn't have Shin, no one would. Yoshi's world vanished in a red haze, and when it cleared, Nagi was no more. This had consequences. Killing another member of the clan was the same as dishonoring oneself. So he was faced with two choices. One was to take his own life and hope for honor in the next life. The other one was to flee with Shen to America and start a new life. He took a few belongings, including his pet, and went to New York to start a small martial arts school. But in Japan, Nagi's family was mourning his death. This affected his younger brother the most, Oroku Saki, who vowed vengeance on Yoshi. The Foot saw this and took hold of Saki's anger and used it to bend him to their own purposes. Saki began intensive training in the ninja's art and soon surpassed his teachers. But as he grew older, his hatred of Yoshi grew deep and bitter. By the time he proved himself to the clan, he was 18 and the most cunning assassin and able leader. The clan sent him to New York to head that branch of the foot. Saki moved to America, and within a year, he had built the New York foot into a force to be reckoned with. Under Saki's leadership, the foot was soon involved in many criminal activities, drug smuggling, arms running, and their speciality, assassination. Saki, now called the Shredder, was successful but not satisfied. In his heart burned hatred for Hamato Yoshi and his wife, Tang Shin. One night, Saki tracked Shin down and killed her. By the time Yoshi arrived home, he found the Shredder waiting for him and the body of his now deceased wife on the floor. Shredder told him he was Oroku Saki before taking his life and that should have been the end of this revenge cycle but there was one witness and survivor from that incident, Yoshi's pet, Splinter, who eventually got mutated with four turtles and spent the next 15 years training them as his students to one day avenge his master Yoshi. Feeling old and fearing he was at the end of his life, Splinter sent his students, who were now ready for the task, to challenge the Shredder and kill him. Raphael sent a message to the Shredder and challenged him to regain the honor that he lost when he killed Yoshi by fighting against four disciples. Shredder felt a little paranoid but accepted the challenge, showing up with at least 11 foot ninja at the scene, and then the fight started. The turtles took care of all of them and then attacked Shredder one by one with slight success. They soon realized that the best strategy was to fight him from a distance. As the fight reached its climax, Shredder got overconfident and ended up being impaled by Leonardo. Slowly dying, Shredder asked the turtles to finish what they started, but Leonardo gave him one last chance to redeem himself by committing seppuku. 
Shredder didn't take this lightly and decided that if he had to take his own life, then he was going to take all of them with him. His new plan was to use a thermite grenade to blow up the whole rooftop and them with it. But Donatello quickly threw his bow at him, knocking him off balance and making him fall off the building before the explosion tore him apart. And that was the end of the Shredder, or so it seemed. The Foot Clan continued attacking the turtles, giving away the fact that they were still active. But one day, Leonardo was chased by multiple waves of ninja until he was attacked by the Shredder, who now seemed to be alive. They threw him through April's window, where the rest of his family was, and the gang had to fight their way out as the building was burning. They received the help of Casey Jones, who was Raphael's friend and was possibly spying on them in previous issues, and together they managed to escape alive, leaving the city. With the turtles gone, the Foot Clan was able to regain control of the city. A year later, the turtles decided it was time to return to New York and found the location of the Foot Headquarters. They made their way into it by fighting waves of ninja, including three creatures that looked like the Shredder. Leonardo found out that the Shredder was just a colony of mystical worms that took his consciousness after eating his flesh. It was a mix of science with worms that were created by the Foot Mystics. You can learn more about that story in this other video. Leonardo ended up decapitating this worm shredder and then they burned his remains. But his head, made of worms, fell into the water and was eaten by a shark. A foot mystic, Mashima, used his spells to access the mystical worms and was able to communicate with them after eating one. He also saw the location of the turtles as one of the worms was still stuck to Leonardo's sword. One day, the turtles were surprised by an anthropomorphic shark in the sewers. It was the Shredder, with features from an octopus and a shark. The turtles were caught by the tentacles of the Shredder, which did something to them. They were defeated. Feeling weird, the Shredder took Splinter and left, leaving the confused turtles behind. All of a sudden, Leo was a very passive leader. Donatello wasn't very bright. Raphael was a coward and Michelangelo was a mix of the better attributes of his brothers. After seeing how reversed his brothers were, Mikey started investigating the mystic arts and found a way to reverse their situation by contacting Pai Duth Noor, an Egyptian baboon deity who agreed to reverse the spell and send them to their master for a future favor. The turtles accepted and he returned them to normal. Back on Earth, they found what Mashima's plan was to use Splinter's body as the new vessel for the Shredder. But as the turtles fought to free Splinter, the worms started gaining self-awareness and no longer felt like Orokosaki anymore. The creature drowned itself into the sea, taking the foot mystic with it. But in the depths, it seemed like the worms were still alive as an aquatic life form. Years later, a faction of the Foot Clan captured Shadow, Casey's daughter, with the turtles being on a spiritual pilgrimage. Splinter promised Casey to help him get her back. Splinter knew this was all a trap to get them, but they went to where the traces led them anyway and finally confronted the clan. The big bad was the aquatic creature, who is now in control of the shark Shredder. No longer being Orokusaki, he wanted revenge against the turtles. But Mashima, whose consciousness was inside the creature, saw no honor in this revenge plot, especially after kidnapping Shadow. Splinter and Mashima used their minds to attack the creature on a psychic level and gave Casey time to rescue Shadow. With Shadow safe, the monster was still under psychic attack, but it wasn't enough to finish it. They needed a physical attack. Casey Jones then beat the creature up, freeing the spirit of Mashima, who was also forgiven by Splinter. This was the end of the worms, and it seemed then that it was also the end of the revenge cycle, but there was still a loose end. Back in Japan, a Foot Clan sorcerer by the name of Mamoru stole money from the organization, and this made them expel him and threaten his entire family. Mamoru, 
who had a wife and a toddler, knew that he was living on borrowed time, so he approached the Oroku family. He knew that, despite there being a truce between the Turtles and the clan, they were still seeking for retribution against the four Kappas. So he approached them and made a deal with them. He would take care of the Turtles in exchange of protection from the Foot Clan. He was a little bit smarter than other opponents. He was only going to use sorcery, to use Aisaki to fight the Turtles. But this didn't work as planned, and he ended up being fulminated by a giant ball of fire. Once again, the revenge cycle that created the Turtles was still leaving tragedy to all the people involved. While this is all that exists about the original Shredder, there were other appearances of this version of the character. In projects like Turtle Forever, or Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, but they were barely canonical. And speaking of canon, there was also a fan-made continuation of this story, made by Andrew Modine, but that one was definitely non-canon. If you want to see more changes that Modine did for the Shredder, you can also check out this other video that covered his conclusion to the image run. In the end, it is worth noticing that unlike other versions of the character, this Orokusaki was first a victim of a cycle of violence, which made his death more tragical. Every iteration of this cycle gave the protagonist the option of stopping it, so in a way, in the Mirage comics, there were no good guys, just better guys. What do you think of this shredder? Leave your comments down below. Press the like button if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.